Hello there everybody, I'm Mr. GamePie, and welcome back to Sonic Riders. Today we're going to be starting up on Waves missions, and right off the bat you'll notice some things are different in this set of missions. First of all, a new obstacle type is introduced, the explosives. Basically along a lot of these tracks, there are going to be these bombs that are placed. If you run into them, they'll take away a lot of your air and slow you down a lot. There are some missions where these are critical, some where these aren't that critical, but are otherwise annoying. Also, the trick missions have now been taken up by Cream instead of Amy. Functionally, this doesn't exactly mean a whole lot. I mean, Cream does play a little bit differently than Amy, but nothing trick-related is different, so <laughs> no real issue there. Also, I get a silver rank on this. Pretty sure that if I did a front flip and then a side spin off the very first ramp up here, I would have actually gotten enough points to win because I was one point off from gold. But otherwise, it was a pretty solid run. Now, we still have the junk missions as mission two. That's, that's still consistent. Mission one is still going to be a trick mission. Mission two is still going to be a junk mission. Nothing has changed in that regard. But uh, the junks that they place in Waves missions are way more difficult. Like, uh, in, even in this, we see some of the interesting tricks that they do. Like, they had one off the ramp there that you have to basically be as far left as possible to grab. Later on, going off of the last ramp, there will be one really high in the air that you have to do a really good backflip for. And that's not the only one they have like that. Also notably, something I was doing a second ago to stay behind the cars and not run into them is holding the, down the R button while turning will do a drift like that. It'll help you turn more effectively, and if you do it for long enough, it'll actually give you a speed boost. It takes up air while you're doing this, but, you know, it, uh, it generally helps to take turns. However, if you're not turning and you hold down the R button, that's actually the brakes. And uh, you'll first slow down, then eventually you'll come to a complete stop. And this technique is incredibly important for getting, um, for doing some of these missions effectively. That said, it kind of messes me up here in a in a mission or two in one of the night chase missions. I'll point out whenever it does. So anyway, mission three is still going to be a mission where you have to get to the end as fast as possible, and there are a lot of obstacles in the way. So that said, now that bombs exist, these missions get quite a bit tougher because hitting a bomb is almost like death in these missions. Otherwise though, not a whole lot is added. This particular mission has a big train in the middle of the road in one section, and getting past it was one of the toughest things to do in the mission. What I did is I went off one of the side ramps and jumped over it. But there's actually a rail somewhere in the level that you can get onto pass by the section entirely. You can see the end of it. You could you could see the end of it coming out of the power pathway. Now, I I tried to look for where, where the rail began, where you could actually get onto the rail, but I could never find it. Honestly, I think that that's why I got the silver rank on this one. But yeah, you'll see me in one of the outtakes here that um, I tried to get to it, but I just couldn't figure out how to get to it. Not this one, though. That This is just me mess messing up the jump. So yeah, this one right here. So you can see the rail right up there. It's, it's right up there. And I have no idea where it begins. Also, I kind of messed up and ran out of all my air, and I realized, no, that's not, that's not going to work. <laughs> uh, Alright. So uh, let's see here. So we still have another mission where we just knock cars around. Punch cars, win. The end. That said, yep, the pathways are blocked. And you actually want to go on the right pathway over here. This is a lot like the, a similar mission in Metal City, the hero counterpart of this stage, where, for some reason, the upper pathway at the very end of the stage is blocked, despite the fact there's no real reason to do that, as far as I'm aware. But yeah, I mean, this stage is just really good for power characters in general, because there are police cars all over the stage. That said, I missed one police car right there, and if I would have gotten it, I would have gotten the gold. But, uh, no. No, I missed it, 
and then I end up getting the silver. But that's okay. I assure you that I will not be getting silver as consistently as this. I am going to actually be getting gold most of the time from here on out. It just so happens that Night Chase kind of messed me up a little bit, got a lot of silver rings. Anyway, so we've been seeing a lot of repeat missions, but let's take a look at one of the new missions that they have for us to do. In this mission, we have to make sure that our speed never goes below 140. Now, Sonic, as a speed character, naturally has a higher top speed, so this isn't too tough for him. But later on, we're going to be playing as characters that don't have a higher natural top speed, and that'll be a little bit difficult. Yeah, right here, one of the outtakes takes place right there. And uh, I end up, I try to drift like I did here in the successful run. But what I ended up doing is accidentally breaking. And that wasn't good. One of the annoying things about these particular types of missions is that, oh yeah, by the way, the cars that normally go through that pathway back there, they don't go through that pathway in this mission because running into a car is death. <laughs> running into a bomb is death. Running into pretty much anything will slow you down below 140. Yeah, one thing about these missions is that charging up your jump to get off of ramps really effectively is very tough while trying to stay over 140 because when charging up your jump, you'll slow down. This is why you find a lot of dash pads before ramps so that you can charge your jump. But as you can see there, I charged too much and it brought me below 40. As you can see here, I tried to slide, but nope, it did the break because I wasn't turning enough. And here, the car kills me. Yeah, those staple stay above 140 speed missions are very difficult. You have to be really precise with them. Anyway, moving on from Night Chase into Red Canyon now. Red Canyon is where we'll really see that the missions for the Babylon versions of tracks are almost going to be the same as the missions for the hero versions of tracks. Beyond the fact that Mission 1 and 2 are going to be the same kind of mission, also this jump. This jump right here causes me so many failures. You see, what I had to do there to get the X rank of the, of the trick is... Basically, I had to do two side flips and then half of another side flip because there wasn't enough space for me to do three. So, if I wanted to get the X rank, I had to land backwards. Because you can, let, you can land backwards or forwards to get a successful rank. It's only if you land left or right that'll, that you'll get the C rank and mess up your landing. But yeah, like I was saying, there's going to be a lot of missions where it's basically just a repeat of the hero version of the mission, but in the Babylon version of the track. Though as a whole, there's always going to be some new mission. To look forward to. Usually in the in the uh, mission five. Yeah, as you can see, I got the gold rank, and that's because I did that really good trick. And then here's me failing the trick, because if you try to do three full turns, it'll end up landing on the side. So you have to do two full turns and one half turn to get the X rank. All right, so now we have a junk collecting mission once again with Sonic, just like it was in Splash Canyon, mission two. And uh, that that ramp is going to be is going to mess me up again because there's just so much going on at the end of that ramp that it, it can be it can get really hectic. After after this mission doesn't mess me up again, but it almost messes me up again because yeah, trying to get onto that rail is a little bit difficult. Otherwise, though, this mission is really easy. There's that getting to that rail is the hardest part. Um, I don't think that there's really anything else that I could identify as being difficult. Like, you know, we got some basic rail jumps here. If you were able to get through them in uh, Storm's mission, you were definitely able to get through them here. Nothing like going through the waterfall on the rails. <laughs> oh, that was an adventure. You'll also notice that the time limit is often going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Not in this mission specifically, but... Waves missions can get down to the wire at times. And, uh, yeah, here's me messing up on this part. Ramp sends me right into the bomb. You really have to get off the ramp at the right point. Oh, yeah, and then there's just this where I completely missed the junk.
All right, so let's see here. And then once again, we do this mission, mission three as Knuckles, where we're punching through everything, just like we did in Splash Canyon. Waves missions can feel a little bit repetitive because of that at times. Because you're really just doing what you did in Storm's mission, again, on the harder track. It isn't until you get to the mission five missions that things get interesting. That said, it is always nice to be able to boost a lot through these areas because there's just barrels all over the place. You almost never run out of air. Just land. Well, now you can boost. Hit some barrels, boost. Run into a thing, boost. It doesn't matter. You, you, there are going to be more barrels for you to punch down. Though uh, this cave right here does make it a little bit more difficult because in the original version of the track there were some crystals that you could punch down, but uh, not anymore. Yeah, from here on out, I'm just boosting constantly, staying at a solid 200 speed. And uh, yeah, no outtakes for that one because that was really easy. All right. And the next one is going to be just another Tails mission, where you fly through a bunch of rings. Except, this one isn't as interesting as Splash Canyon's. I think that that's a little bit consistent, because in Splash Canyon, they did a lot of things with the waterfall. Where, in Tails' mission here, you would fly over the waterfall, and then in Sonic's mission, you would grind rail around the waterfall. And that was really cool stuff. They did a lot of cool stuff with that. Also, I messed up the trick here so that I wouldn't end up hitting the dash pads and passing by the flight rings. Because that is a strategy, because whenever you, uh, you know, land and do a, a trick successfully, you do have a speed boost. And if you find that you're going to land where you don't want to, you just m mess up the trick and make sure that you slow down enough to get to the part that you want to get to. Yeah, like, this part is a little bit cool. But otherwise, I mean, this mission is just really basic, really bland, not much going on. Especially in comparison to the Splash Canyon version of the mission. And I am probably going to do that a lot, where I compare the Wave version of the mission to the Storm version of the mission. But that said, next we get to another very interesting mission, where we're actually going to be given another ride. In Storm's mission, Knuckles was often given the high booster so that he could boost through uh, several objects in a row. In Wave's missions, we're given another new ride. It, this is called the Air Tank. And in this mission, what we have to do is we start out with almost no air. And what we have to do is have at least 50% air by the end of the track. Now, the Air Tank makes this a little bit difficult because it has a higher air capacity than any other ride. Otherwise, it has some pretty lackluster stats, but thanks to its really high air capacity, you can do things like drift and boost, like, constantly without much worry. Because you do normally start out with all of your air in tow. Yeah, stuff like getting really good tricks, going through your uh, special pathways, going through the, uh, the control stick spinning sections, they're all going to be incredibly important for these missions. I mean, technically, they're usually important for just about anything you do in this game, but this mission, this kind of mission in particular, is very important for it to do. And with that said, I believe this is the only bike-type gear that you use in mission mode. And you never use any skate-type gear in mission mode, so it's mostly just boards. Yeah, otherwise, until next time, guys, I'm Mr. GamePy, and uh, we're going to be moving on to Ice Factory next time. So until then, see you later.